an epistle to the writ Honorable Maurice Wintermo, Esquire of Zythopolis in the Northwest Territory of His Majesty's American Dominions. Thanks for the gift, nor blame me if I tetter and slip into mine antient vice of meter. For sure, kindness piles temptation on with this new handy guide to Helicon. Though brief, tis clear with no false precepts strown, nor fashioned for the pedant's mind alone. Each turn of style and each mechanic art, the cogent author can with skill impart. Bright beyond rivals, peerless three or four ways, a fitting pair of steps to reach your doorways. Yet such a tome must take its proper place, nor I with your own volume in the race. Good sir, but what new marvels daily come, full armed from the mercratic cerebrum, tests, outlines, drills, and now your genius adds new leaves of wonder in your separate paths. Macmillan sure would prove a brainless dolt, did he not vie in eagerness with Holt. But be their sense of judgment more or less, you need not care for you've the Kenyan press. Nurse of the arts, hail. Matter gloriosa. The press that carried fame to Wau Watosa. And now in meekness, let my fancy glance at these sly tests which proved my ignorance. Those tricky snares which even Martanian mind could scarcely meet and scatheless leave behind. The prose I view with less disordered pride and by my pristine verdicts still abide. Be maybe Tark's but still I vow it groans, with needless weight and talks and cumbrous tones, labors for power forgetting to be neat, and trades its birthright for a cheap conceit. As for trife F, I censured not its stream of thought, nor held it faithless to its theme. My wildest wish was for less verbal pelf, and for more freshness from the scribe himself, but it, oh, priceless pearl, how quick mine eye caught the bright vision from an age gone by, past my pleased mind in long procession ran, the assembled genius of the A.J. clan, Lynch, Houghton, Fritter, Roving, Hennessy, Hasserman, Don't Choke, and Deathless, David V., Lehemkul and Crowley, and young imps of hell, Porter and Moiteret and Kid Dowdell, would be and war knight, the foreground take, whilst over all immortal sores are Jake, dropping to poesy, my head drops too, as my illiterate score I dumbly view, so dumb a hue my mental equipage. I think Lambus was a Grecian sage. What can I say when here I stand confessed? I can't pluck Shelley in a blindfold test. How can I face the world, a crawling midge who puts a Wordsworth tag on Coleridge? I say no more, may all the muses chide me, but damn it, Morton's in the soup beside me. I now with pleasure hear, whilst you relate, your recent deeds and how you astivate. Pox on it, but how you crown the flying hours with new-made proofs of your scholastic powers. Your leisure's like my toil, and when you labor, you rise to heights that leave you not a neighbor. I still await my cherished 
chance to quaff the nectar of your class day. Mo, no graph. Ah, me, can't be that twenty years and more have passed since that blessed golden age. Oh, four, a quarter century, and old and gray, we see it as if it were yesterday. Old 1900s, what would we not give? Once more amid your artless hours to live. Puff ties and cakewalks, cloak and sword romance, and Teddy fighting back the trust's advance. Queer horseless carriages on cobbled streets. A new find radium in the science sheets. Wireless, the latest, never will be much use. Japan, not yet a mark for our abuse. But Delhi a light on every whistler's lip. And a rearward sitting, still the smartest quip. St. Louis glory crowds and Fairward push to rest beneath the broad and Hauser bush. Edwardus Rex on Britain's antient throne and Hiawatha on the graphophone. Graphophone. Hope still triumphant and the cold gray morn of Mencken. Crouch and Einstein yet unborn. Harper's chaste leaves with polished mildness rife. And Prim McClure's a stranger still to life. Gilder still gilding with decorous mien. And winter freezing o'er the painted scene. Van Dyke and Aldrich sang in fresh rhymes the borrowed thoughts and saws of other times vague pleasing dreams of futures ever young the simple life on every trusting tongue graft and muckraking in their genial flight fights and prophets soon to set the world to rights doey limabbit parkhurst and the rest with various plans to put us midst the blessed. Brian and Hannah, Negro minstrel shows. Elb Hubbard posing o'er his wince sore bows. Corbett. Fitzsimmons, Sharky, and old Jeff, Pete Daly, Weber Fields, and Fritzy, Chef, Young Buster, noising out, the yellow kid, and every newsboy, in an old coon lid, extra Port Arthur Falls, we stand aghast, but Russia's czar has got a son at last. Santos Dumont displays a fresh balloon and Langley vows his gilders will fly soon. Bill Pickering vainly tells a skeptic nation of finding signs of lunar vegetation. Narcan Park Lowell gather many pals to hear about his precious Mars canals. Dear bygone days, could modern genius hatch a Miss Wiggs from any cabbage patch? Could modern talent make us gape and marvel at Zenda, Haddon Hall, or Richard Carvel? Is it a four produced what modern throats but wine? The flower of my heart, sweet Adeline, then. Peeland's prints in tuneful splendor reigned, and woodland bloomed by jazz yet unprofaned.
Boston was still a separate Rome from Cork, whilst England yet was spoken. While English yet was spoken in New York. Shades of the past, and have I lived to view a scene so different and a world so new? Have five and twenty years in truth gone by, while still the old days seem so clear and nigh? Zounds, tis a dream. This is not I at all. This gray beard in the mirror on the wall. What nonsense when but lately I dare don a derby hat and put long trousers on. Of course, tis dreaming. Merely look about and see how all realities in rout. Autos and droves, men flying over the mist, and talk of things that simply can't exist. Shucks, there's the proof. Sure, we need fret no more, because it must be still our old zero four. We're merely dizzy, say from overeating. Are from some thought of time's relentless fleeting. Sing, boys, in chorus, put the nightmare down with bluebell, creole bells, our Nancy Brown. All one, two, three, nor let your voices fail ye. Won't you come home here? Mind the pitch. Bill Bailey. No, that won't do. Try this. Oh, Krama. Too high, I fancy. Be my guiding star. What's this, no rhyme? Oh, damn, such close precision. I hold these western rrrrs in deep derision. Not on your life. I vow you're off your trolley. To think I'd listen to such upstart folly. A fight, a fight. Here, knock this his block off, Joe. Eat him up, Jack. Dump him at Buffalo. But in his coconut... Lamb him on the bean. Go bite his head off. Puncture his canteen. Bats in your belfry. You're another jack. Bum bug house loony. Go sit on a tack. Thus down the years. The viral. Echoes pour. Fresh with the vigor. Of the days of yore. While such survive, is it not still a four? Oh yes, those magazines which presently will saunter westward to 2303. In one vast packet, safely, all return all. Mags, doorways, and that pleasing English journal. The latter, thanks, sheds an informing blaze on your young charges' editorial ways. I see, I know, and with new zeal extend, congrats on what each hopeful chick hath penned. So gifted, Franklin turns the other cheek, in fistic fashion, vigilant to seek, ways to knock guys to the middle of next week. Attaboy, Frank, and don't ya let no bimbo knock you downhill into de has-been's limbo. Keep right and left gloved, dauntless and on edge, till every knuckle grows to be a sledge. Punch him to pulp and let Manila's shore grow vocal in one tributary roar. But keep art's cunning in the mitt that slugs. Pug among painters, painter among pugs. I thrill with joy if rems devoid of sound will bring mocratic lines more frequent round. For my part, nothing like a damned machine will give my thought a free and fair nemesine. Tis too unnatural for an old man still, a dweller in the realm of script and quill. Words pause, embarrassed, images depart, at sight of such an enemy to art. When thoughts pile up, a pin must set him free. My grandsire's ways 
are good enough for me. While, sir, my days in wanted fashion run beneath Rhode Island's classic Georgian sun. Last week a guest adorned the local strand. Victor E. Bacon of the A.J. Band. Fresh from convention, he declared his fellows had nursed the dying flame with frantic bellows. And happier twelve month he discerns ahead, the national still declining to be dead. Six years had passed since I, the youth, had seen in visual form and recalled him lean. Fancy my thoughts to find him decked today and all the poundage I have cast away. His stay was brief, yet filled with liberal cheer and seasoned with our Georgian atmosphere to Newport's antient shore I bade him rove. An old pal tucket dreaming by its cove. Of much we spoke the past more than the present, so that the passing hours to both were pleasant. And so it goes. But, Lud, you must be yawning at these misshapen lines my quill is spawning. Pardon, sir, pardon, yet pray don't admit to mine that Peter set me doing it. A brief recess, now back to art's dim last row, to doctor that cursed junk by old de Castro. Hail and farewell, and may my trembling hand clasp yours some morning in a better land, some Delian isle, our mild Aeonian shore, where twill be ever summer. And all four, no matter how good you are in a category, no matter how much you do, there will always be more. So admit to the limits of your own hand. And don't be something that would be rightly remitted in your own land.